a few years ago, I casually surveyed a group of girls and asked them about their interest in studying computer science in high school. And the results were pretty disheartening, not because they didn't want to take it, but because they couldn't take it. They didn't have the option in their schools. In fact, here in Massachusetts, a young woman named Samantha said, there is no CS in my high school. I'm hoping my principal will let me sit alone in a classroom for an hour each day and work on it by myself. And I thought, why are we making this so hard? This is a subject that's been around since the 80s. Why are we weeding out instead of inviting in? So apparently, in 2010, when I did that survey, the prerequisite to take computer science in high school was prior knowledge of the topic, an intrinsic motivation to take that class, and the grit to go demand to your principal that you can sit alone in a classroom and do it on your own. So then you start thinking about, what about the students that don't know what they don't know, that don't know that that opportunity even exists, that don't have families and parents with access to technology to show them that's even a possibility? For every Samantha, there's probably a whole classroom of students that would do it, could do it, might do it if they knew that path was in front of them. Scores of talent lost to a totally broken system. Samantha made her way into computer science not because of the education we provide, but in spite of it. And that was the state of the play well into 2012. Computer science education was declining in K-12, it was largely unavailable, it didn't count, as computers had become ubiquitous, computer science had been lost. So I think about when I experienced my first computer, and I am not a millennial, um, <laughs> so I was in middle school, a Memorial Middle School in Albany, Oregon, and my teacher got his hands on an Apple IIe. And he brought it into our science class, and he was one of those like early adopter kind of guys, and he was learning right alongside us, and Students were making little games, and I remember a boy like put my name inside a heart and printed it on something with like a dot matrix printer. And at that time, all software was really enterprise. And the only thing you could really do with a computer in a school was program it. So that's what we were doing. And so any student with a little bit of an introduction could sit down and make something totally new and unique that nobody had ever done before. And it was magical and empowering. But that declined. You can see here the evidence. This is the graduation rates in college. And you can see the evidence of the loss of K-12 computer science in what's happening in college. So software had become complex and sophisticated. And all these things that we used to do right up front that were behind the veil. Software did more and more stuff for you. And the computers were still in the schools, but now we were using them to research and learn other subjects instead of them being a platform of learning in themselves. Also, computer science wasn't really on the radar, right? It wasn't part of school. It wasn't a core requirement. It didn't count towards graduation in almost every state. This, universities weren't demanding it for admissions, like algebra or biology. <coughs> It wasn't on the SATs, it wasn't on the standardized test, so it wasn't being counted, so it didn't count. So, meanwhile, the employers are sitting there going, where's our, where's our workforce? We need more H-1B visas. And the universities were scratching their heads going, what happened to all our students? They were actually closing and, and combining departments. So, fast forward today, and things have changed dramatically. There is a national movement afoot to bring computer science to all students in this nation, and it is moving at an unprecedented pace. This idea of adding an entirely new topic to K-12 education in probably the most complex distributed education system in the world is huge. I was talking with this guy who does education for Intel, and he was like, say what you will about a dictatorship, but one conversation, you can change the whole country. Korea just made it a requirement for software engineering for all their students. We can't do that. No one in this country, not even the president, can say you must teach computer science. So it has to be done at a grassroots level by individual people. So Computer Science for All calls for rigorous, engaging computer science education to be available for all American students. That means they need to learn logic, 
algorithms, computational thinking at every stage of their experience so that they're ready to take on the complex techno technological world. So I joined the White House in May to lift up and amplify this grassroots movement as much as I could until the end of the administration. And I am happy to say that I have had the privilege of recognizing and highlighting the work of hundreds and hundreds of people that are doing this at the community level all over the nation. People like Art Lopez, who happens to be the shortest one in the picture, and he's standing with the uh, deputy CTO of the United States, Ed Felton. And his student, Adrian, who's the young man there, he went to him and he said, Mr. Lopez, how come the kids at Torrey Pines in La Jolla have computer science and we don't in Sweetwater schools? Sweetwater has 44 schools. Five years ago, they had zero computer science classes. Today, they have 40, 41. And Adrian is a freshman at Stanford. Or Brenda Wilkerson. I saw Brenda this week in Chicago. She has the enormous task on her shoulders of bringing computer science to all students as a graduation requirement in Chicago public schools. Now, that is 400,000 students in a very complex, diverse district. And they've set a target that by 2020, all their students are going to be required to have computer science to graduate. She needs to train 3,000 new teachers in computer science, right? It's not as though we have a glut of people with computer science degrees waiting to become teachers, right? And she does that tirelessly day in and day out and mentors other districts on her own time. Or one of my favorites in Oklahoma, the Muscogee Creek Tribe has bonded with this group called um, Botball Junior. And they have brought pre-K through elementary school computational thinking with robots. They have 300 students in Head Start learning computational thinking. And they zoomed so far ahead that they had to like quick, fast, make some more curriculum because the kids got ahead of them. All over the nation, there are these incredible efforts by community members to make this change. There's Project Code Nodes in West Virginia that's partnering with, a black, with the African-American churches. There's Daddy Daughter Code Nights in North Carolina. There's a laundromat in South Carolina that's hosting coding classes on Wednesday nights. There are literally hundreds of organizations that are focusing on this work. 500 organizations have stepped up to commit to computer science for all. And since 2013, we now have 32 states that count computer science towards graduation include, and Washington, DC. But the work is not yet done. Last year, 25% of schools had computer science. This year, 40%. So we are on a roll, and that's good news. But it means we need to double down. Education reform goes in sort of a three-year cycle. And sometimes the system likes to just wait it out, right? We need to keep the feet to the fire here, because this is really important. We live in a complex technological world that is getting more complex every day. And I think anyone would agree that with cybersecurity, with information, and the ubiquity of devices, that this is more and more important, that students understand, one, that these devices are programmed, and two, how they could be the creators and programmers of the next generation of technologies. So it's really important that we create a lasting, sustainable computer science system for this nation. Lasting and sustainable meaning that all students have access, equal, meaningful access. That it's normal for a student to do computer science, not exceptional like Samantha. That we're giving them the foundational skills to live in this technological world and be the innovators of tomorrow. But we have to do this thoughtfully and carefully because systems are systems, and they are designed to be permanent and immobile. So like an ocean liner, once you get it moving, it's really hard to change course. So that's why equity and rigor have to be at top of mind all the time. Like I have an equity checkbox that we look at every time we look at a program. So the good news is there's interest, there's awareness, parents are engaged, nine out of parents want computer science for their students, and we are moving. And the other good news is we have done this kind of thing before. We are the nation that put the first man on the moon 
and we are going to be the nation that puts the first woman on Mars. Innovation and big challenges are in our DNA. It's going to take a lot of work, and it's take a lot of strategy, and a lot of commitment, and it's gonna take all of your help, but if you join us, we've got this. <laughs>